What's up ghouls, it's Blaze and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thank you for joining us for the 31 days of Halloween. It is greatly appreciated. If you're not new here, then I'm so happy that you came back. <laughs> so today we are on day 12 of my 31 days of Halloween and today's video may not be for all of you, but for my witchy folk out there, this one is for you guys. So this video is all about sewing the witchy sabbat um, I'm going to tell you what it is um, how you can celebrate it and a ritual idea so I'm really excited to talk about this it's my favorite sabbat it's what I wait for all year not just because it's Halloween but just everything about it is so me like I love it I get so pumped for sewing um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about it it's the third and final harvest in the calendar the first one is Lunasa or Lamas um, which is um, around August 1st and that is the first harvest in the calendar. The second one is Mayburn which is around September 21st and that's the second harvest and so sowing is the third and final harvest of the calendar. It also represents the start in the new wheel of the year so it's um, like, a, like a New Year's Eve celebration type thing. Uh, just for a quick idea that is the kind of wheel of the year and we have sewing right here at the top. So it's celebrated on October 31st or November 1st depending on what you choose to celebrate. Personally I pick the actual October 31st. Um, I didn't get to celebrate it last year because I was so busy with work so I'm really hoping I get time to celebrate it this year because I'm going to be so upset if I don't. Like I wait all year for this. <laughs> so what's really cool about sewing is that the veil between the living and the dead is so thin at this point. One may say you could pierce the veil. <laughs> I'm sorry I'll quit YouTube now. <laughs> um, yeah so the veil is at its thinnest so this is a great time for divination for contacting spirits any kind of spirit work this is the best time to do so um, ways in which you could decorate your altar following on from that is any kind of divination tool be it crystal balls tarot pendulum scrying mirror scrying bowl um, Ouija board any kind of divination tool is a perfectly acceptable decoration for your altar at this time of year um, you could also include images of the deceased, so any family members, any family or friends who've passed away, whom you wish to contact with or just remember. That's a great idea of how to decorate your altar. If you don't have a picture of them per se, you could write their name on paper, just anything, an object of theirs, anything that's going to bring some kind of connection and some way of remembering them. Also, pumpkins, they are such a cute way to decorate your altar for sewing. Love a good pumpkin. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty cute. Also candles are good for this time of year because for sewing a lot of people do bonfires if you have the means to, if not a couple of little candles on your altar could be good for that, maybe red or orange if you want to get real festive. Um, but I would say the colour scheme that I tend to stick to for sewing is black, white and orange. Feel free to go with whatever feels more natural to you but that is what I like to do. So there's just some ideas on how you could decorate your altar for sewing. Of course you like I have an altar that is up year round and it's always ready for me to use however you could literally set up an altar just for this one night. You could have it for all of October, whatever feels more natural for you. So my favourite part of sewing is finding ways to celebrate it and obviously you can't get all of this done in one day so this could be the week leading up to sewing to slowly prepare for it but this is like my favourite time of year, this is what I live for. <laughs> so um, as I said it's the best time for divination so obviously any form of divination is a great way to celebrate sewing. Um, a dumb supper I've never done one of these but I've read online a lot of people who have and this is where you could do this as a uh, solitary witch although maybe you don't talk anyway when you eat dinner or you could do this as a coven um, so you would all set up your feast you would have your food ready and no one talks throughout the meal no one says a word and you would often leave a place for a spirit to sit and join you and you would leave them food on their plate you don't talk until the meal is finished and then take your offering outside and leave it for animals. Don't ever throw away an offering. So yeah, you could try a dumb supper. Um, leave a candle in the window to help lost spirits guide them. You could be guiding your own relatives to you or guiding any spirits on the way they're trying to go. 
Um, like I said, leave offerings for the dead, leave them outside, but make sure there's nothing that's going to harm any animals in your area. For example, if you know you've got rabbits, badgers, squirrels, stuff like that around the area you live, make sure you don't leave anything that's toxic or going to harm them, because we do not want to harm animals. Um, if you're not into spirit activity, you don't wish to be contacted, you could set up wards and shields and things like that, um, using sigils to protect your home, using leaving salt outside the door, any kind of ward that's going to stop spirit activity if you do not wish for that. Um, my favourite, favourite thing to do for sewing is a massive feast and I always wait, always wake, always make far too much food so me and Jake are just like how are we going to eat this? Um, so I make a huge feast, I set the table, I have these special tablecloths that I only bring out once a year for sewing and they're so cute. So you can pop those out and make sure to leave a place for the dead. I didn't leave any food on their plate last time, I literally just left a plate and knives and forks and set the table for the dead. Because um, I'm not entirely sure that the food I make is safe, <laughs> even for human consumption. I'm not a good cook. But yeah, so um, you prefer, prepare? Prepare loads of food, leave a place for the dead, enjoy your feast. I personally don't do a dumb supper because I feel like it's time to celebrate, not time to be quiet. So yeah, have a great feast, enjoy myself, have some wine, and that is one of my favourite ways to celebrate the um, Sabbath. Another thing you can do is take grave rubbings, as I mentioned in a previous video. Um, these are also a really great way to decorate your altar because it's linking the dead and the living and it's a great way to remember the dead. So you could do that as just a sewing activity anyway. Carving a pumpkin because again, putting the light inside the pumpkin and leaving it on your window is going to guide the spirits. There's loads of normal Halloween activities that have come from pagan traditions. So um, even if you are a closet witch, and you don't want to tell anyone that you're a witch but you still live at home or you live with friends or whatever a really good way to celebrate sewing in public but also in private is just to carve a pumpkin and leave it in your window but if you're leaving it overnight use an electronic candle because i'm not about houses burning down <laughs> um yeah and as for a ritual um the ritual that i have chosen and that i perform at sewing um, combines a lot of the things that I've talked about. Um, I'm not going to go through it all now because it's quite a chunky piece of text but I will leave the ritual written in the description. Um, it's literally just words so interpret it how you will, do with it what you will, whether you choose to do every single thing stated or whether you cut bits out, by all means do. It's your ritual at the end of the day, it's your sabbath and when you do make sure you record it in your book of shadows so that you can refer back to it. So yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to talk about for this video. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. However, please know that I am not an absolute expert. This is just my experience, what I do, and the information that I have found. Um, as usual, I use Tumblr as a source. Obviously, don't take every word as fact. Do your own research behind it. But these are the things that I have found. So yeah. I really hope you enjoy your sewing, I hope it's super super fun and if you do any kind of ceremony, not necessarily ceremony because you wouldn't want to share that, if you do any celebrations towards sewing, if you do any crafting, decorating your altar, please tag me on Instagram or Twitter or anything really, I would just love to see what you guys get up to because I freaking love sewing, I'm so excited. Um, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's it for this video. Thank you so much for joining me for day 12 of the 31 days of Halloween. And make sure you come back because there is a fuck ton of more cool stuff to come. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye.